we should be on. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Oh boy, I am getting a crisp, uh, <laughs> I'm getting a crisp 700 kilobytes per second here, but, uh, I think it will fix it itself in due time. Let's just roll with it. Hi, hope we're all doing all right. Hope we've all been enjoying shots fired so far. My name is Drunk Wario, and I'll be, uh, happy to provide a sequel to a previous Dead Rising Spirit that was done on the very first shots fired by Dysis. Uh, this is all scoops, so, uh, you're maybe wondering what the skip is in this category's name. Uh, basically, if you've never played Dead Rising before, it is a survival horror game set in a mall. You can see that very nice looking mall through the uh, very low bitrate, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I actually did the testing before that, it should have been fine, whatever. Uh, but... In essence, this game is a six-hour-long auto-scroller. Under normal circumstances, the game is a six-hour-long auto-scroller. But, uh, using some very fancy technical workings with some separate C-sharp-based scripts, we can actually make the game fast-forward through time, uh, which would normally be spent standing around... So, we're going to do everything the game has to offer outside of some light achievement hunting, which would take about an extra 20 hours, and I don't think we have enough time to do that. But, we will need to switch to our very brand new save, considering this is a new game run. Uh, time will start when I gain control of Frank West on the roof of the Wilmette Parkview Mall, which should be in about, uh, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay. So the very first thing we're going to be doing is going down to start the prologue in Entrance Plaza. Uh, you'll see me jumping around quite a bit. Uh, level 1 Frank is really slow. Like, this slow. You don't really blame him, considering he just jumped out of a helicopter from about 50 to 100 feet and landed square on his ankle or his knee or something like that. It probably hurt, so uh, we're going to put a little bit more pressure on his injured leg by jumping around a lot. Is this a restreamer problem or a runner problem? I... I would like to think this is a restream problem, because I just did a test on my own, and I hit a clean 3,000 kilobytes per second. And I'm running at a clean 60 FPS at 720 output, so... We might be hitting a little bit of a snag. Excuse me, we might be hitting a little bit of a snag here. It looks fine, but there's no frames. Hmm. We are dropping frames, and I'm not sure... If it is a restream issue or not. Anyway. Oh no, there's zombies and there's people dying everywhere. We need to grab this gun though, because this shot's fired. There we go. We fulfilled the requirement. Uh, we're going to be grabbing a shotgun here real quick in the prologue. You're fine on my end. Oh boy. Uh, do we want to run like... Uh... <laughs> run like an internet test here real quick or make sure Steam's not downloading anything. No, Steam's not downloading anything. My internet on Task Manager says that the only thing that's using it is OBS. Oh boy. Anyway, while we try to sort out all these internet issues, we're going to talk to some people here real quick. Oh, Jeff is complaining. Alright, we'll talk to him later. So, when I say we're going to do all the scoops, basically we're just going to be doing all missions. That includes rescuing everybody, and if you've never heard of Dead Rising before, this game is notorious for extremely bad AI, and uh... I won't disagree with the notion, but it is a bit, uh, rough around the edges a little bit. Yeah, this frame drop is awful. I am so sorry, everybody, but there's nothing I can really do about it right now in already in progress. Anyway, if you can see through the frames, we're gonna be spitting on Janelle and Jeff to stop them from hugging. Makes about as much sense as the rest of that's going on right now. And we're going to take a picture of this vent Fantastic. while Frank is talking to them from a, a little bit of a distance. We'll be using this picture in about, uh, maybe about an hour and a half from now. Oh, Natalie was doing the electric slide over there. I need to get her to actually follow me. And that is the very first two people rescued out of about, uh, 48 or so that we'll need to rescue. It's a bit of a high number, but, you know. We'll all do it in due time. 
might be a streaming server issue. This people we're sharing the server with are running four streams all at 4K bitrate. That might be the problem. <laughs> all right, so we're going to be getting our first story mission here. Uh, in case you've never heard of the game Story, uh, Frank West is a freelance photojournalist who got a hot tip that something big is happening in the town of Willamette, Colorado. And basically, it's zombies. It's, it's always zombies. And uh, we have three days to figure out why there are zombies and make sure we don't die in the process. And uh, this very first thing you'll see on the upper right corner of our screen is the scoop queue, which is the very first thing we have for the story is back up for Brad. And I would say under normal circumstances, you'll see all of the missions pop up here when I get them through the uh, transceiver by that lovely gentleman we saw back in the security room called Otis. But uh, we're actually not going to be answering the phone because uh, all of the missions in this game run on a strict schedule. And most of them happen regardless of whether or not you actually pick up the phone. And we're going to be trying to actually do all of these missions without having the game tell us where they are. Because we've probably played this game for about uh, maybe about a thousand hours or so since it came out in 2016. I might know a thing or two. But uh, we'll be fighting our first boss fight right up here with Carlito Keys. He was a gentleman we saw on the rooftop of the mall for about a second and a half before we just walked right past him without talking. And we got a handy dandy shotgun here. And uh, I, I like the description that Ecdysis gave for how shotguns work in this game in that they work like they do in reality. It's kind of not true and it kind of is true. It depends on what you're actually shooting at. But... Uh, shotguns deal a flat damage rate based on whether you hit a target in the head or in the body. It does not matter based on distance. Uh, the shotgun damage either it does all damage or it deals no damage. And using that property we can just walk right up to the maximum range we can be away from Carlito and shoot him a few bit. Uh, also, we don't need to actually have Brad follow us. Uh, we're supposed to have Brad come with us to Entrance Plaza to meet a guy that is essential to the story, but we don't actually need to follow him. Could we try dropping down to 30? Sure. Uh, stream output video. I'll stop the stream real quick. Hey, that looks kind of better. <laughs> that looks a lot better, actually. Kinda. I'm getting 2,000, and then I'm not getting any dropped frames, so it actually looks kind of neat. And we're still at 720p, it's just that you need to see it at 30. Sorry, everybody. You know, the game actually came out in 30 FPS back in 2006, so I suppose you're seeing it as the way Keiji and Ifune, creator of Mega Man, wanted it to. Anyway, there's a man back here. Oh, I don't you know jump kick yet. Uh, I need to escape her through all these boxes. Uh, this is Bill Breton. He got stuck behind these very conveniently organized pile of boxes in his store for about two days. And he has no idea that zombies are even in the mall right now. And he is not questioning the fact that I'm holding a handgun and just shot down all those boxes. And we need to spend a little bit of time talking to him. And in the meantime, we're going to kill all of the zombies in this immediate area. Because otherwise, Bill will uh, stop in the very back of the store instead of running out and seeing all the corpses. It's actually watchable now. I, that makes me happier than anything I could ever want for a Christmas gift. Alright, so we need to talk to him for a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, we actually experienced our first time fast forward because it was about 1pm when we entered Entrance Plaza and lowered the barricade. But now it's actually about 5 o'clock because uh, another series of missions starts in Alfresca Plaza at 5 o'clock and 4 o'clock respectively. So we're going to try to wait to see if everybody can be rescued at once. Uh, we're going to take a phone call right now. This doesn't actually provide a mission, but in about an hour or so, we're going to receive our first mission that can only be done if we answer the phone call for it. And given that this is all missions, we need to do it. And the very first phone call we get gets two extra text boxes added onto it with Frank, uh, with Otis telling Frank that it is Otis calling him, even though that there are no one else that it could be calling him. 
we're gonna wait for Bill to reach a certain point. Uh, this looks about good. We're gonna give him our handgun. We're gonna tell him to wait over there. If he comes over to the fountain with me, that's gonna be very bad because he is going to get stuck on zombies. Is he going over there? Okay, good. He's staying over there. Uh, there's gonna be three more people at the other end of this hallway here. We're gonna clear the path for Bill with our Uzi that was just conveniently lying around in the fountain because uh, this is America. There's guns. There's just guns lying around in fountains and in garbage cans and in the gun store that is currently being uh, occupied by the store owner who is a boss later that we'll need to kill. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, we're talking with Leia here. Poor Leia's baby was eaten alive by zombies and she's sort of not really... Uh, herself right now. We need to wait for her to actually come back to her senses. We'll need to talk to her for a little bit while Bill is just getting mobbed by zombies. Thankfully, my gun is not high-powered enough to actually uh, instantly kill Bill if I shoot him in the head. Uh, if I were to shoot Bill in the head with my shotgun, it would instantly kill him, and the run is null and void, because that would have mean I have not successfully completed a mission. We're going to talk to her a little bit more. We're going to set our waypoint over here, and we're going to skateboard into this barricade. Do I have jump kick yet? Oh, I do. Cool. Oh. Okay, there we go. Leia's conversation took a little bit too long to finish. Uh, good old Bert here. We need to shoot him a few times. Because otherwise, Bill or Bert would start attacking us. We need to talk to him for a little bit more. And in the meantime, we're going to get rid of this barricade if I can actually pick up the bench. Because even though these two set up the barricade, they won't have a very uh, easy time getting around it if I don't manually move every single object out of their way. Alright, I believe we can have everybody go over here now. No one's going to get stuck on anything. And this will be the first group that we bring back to the security room besides uh, Jeff and Natalie, who we unfortunately did not see through the PowerPoint presentation we saw before. Uh, Aaron is a very interesting person. Uh, there's a lot of... Despite the AI for this game commonly being ridiculed as bad, there's actually a lot of quirks that go into how each person acts in this game. Uh, Aaron actually has two separate tags assigned to his AI. He has the cowardly AI, and he is dependent. So, he's cowardly, he'll often, like, if I don't keep him moving, he'll uh, start breaking down on the floor and crying and crawling around on his hands and knees really slowly. Uh, and by dependent is that he actually does not follow my instructions. He is tagged to Bert. So, if I tell him to wait somewhere, he'll only go there if Bert is also running towards there. There is a few people in this game that have dependent AI. Some of them are more troubling than others, but Aaron is unfortunately one of the more troubling cases just because we uh, have very low level. We have to carry Leia because she has a broken leg from getting uh, bit by a zombie here, probably. And uh, we have basically no weapons to actually protect him with other than our uh, little dinky submachine gun. And uh, if you've played this game before, you're wondering, hey, isn't there supposed to be a boss fight here right now with a bunch of convicts on a jeep? Uh, not quite. Uh, need to have him coming along here. Oh, Bill's getting stuck. Uh, how about you just go over there and wait while I rescue Bill here? You want it? There we go. Come on, Bill, get going. I didn't even realize that Bill got stuck. He sort of took a beating there for a little bit. Uh, anyway, there is supposed to be a boss fight here, but only after 6 o'clock. And uh, we actually entered here at about 5.50-ish, I would say. So we actually got here a bit too early, and bosses only spawn if you enter an area before the uh, scheduled time. No Gone Guru? There will be Gone Guru, don't you worry. We're going to hear it a lot. We're going to be hearing it a lot, even though we only actually fight the convicts once. Oh, by the way, I didn't actually explain something. Uh, when you saw me not shooting at Bill, uh, I was actually waiting for Bill to get hit by a zombie, because when a survivor in this game is hit by a zombie, they actually have iframes for the entirety of their stun animation by the player. 
So if I were to if I were to hit Bill, he would continue to have uh, like vulnerability to me. But because he's getting hit by a zombie, the game wants to go, hey, you can just wail on a bunch of zombies with your guns and melee weapons. It'll all be fine. So I waited for that, so I didn't accidentally peg Bill in the head and kill him instantly. Also, this is Kent. Uh, he's a boss. He's the last optional boss we will fight, but for right now, he's actually just the, uh, the camera tutorial. And we shot him because shooting him makes us uh, skip about seven text boxes into the conversation. We would lose about, like, a minute if we didn't shoot him, so you'll sort of have to deal with it. We're going to be taking two pictures with him. First one is him posing with his camera, and then the next one is him going, Great shot, or nice one. And uh, if we're lucky or unlucky, he may actually decide to change locales. One more. One more, buddy. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So he did not decide to change locations, which would waste about 30 seconds. And we have successfully set up another mission for uh, about another 24 hours in-game from now, at noon on day two, so where we have to provide him with a picture that has 500 or fi more than 500 erotica points. So we need to take a picture that is sexy enough for him to uh, consider our talents in photography. And there's only uh, two sources that we can actually get that picture from on a new game save file, so we're going to be having a little bit of a fun time trying to get that. Oh, Bill's having uh, Bill's having a bit of an issue there on the plant. Okay, we're good. <laughs> that plant is the bane of my existence. It gets so many people stuck. Uh, anyway, uh, that cutscene we just got... Uh, Let's us use queens now. Uh, queens are the bug that actually causes the zombie infection by... When it stings a person, it lays larvae in the nervous system, and then it takes over the entire body. And that's probably not good, but that doesn't happen to Frank West. When Frank West sees a queen, he taps it in a jar, and we can use it as an anti-zombie grenade. Those will be pretty helpful in some situations later in the run. Is this a submission? Uh, is this a submission for what? <laughs> this is just a general run, my man. Although I did have to submit this game, this uh, game and category to the speedrun marathon, if that's what you mean. They didn't just let me on at last minute without actually telling anybody. All right, that's our first group rescued, and now we need to go right back out and get another one. I'm another group, I mean. So we receive a bunch of level ups, and we did get stock six, which is very, very nice. Uh, not having six inventory slots at this fight would be a bit of an inconvenience, so I'm glad I don't have to reroute getting a few things. All right, for those of you who wanted Gone Guru, I hope you enjoy it. You can sing along if you know the words. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be hearing too many of them. So whenever the convict fight first starts and you get the cutscene, the convicts start in the same spot every time. Which is right here. We can kill the gunner. We can just grab the machine gun. And the convicts are dead. If you enter this fight through Paradise Plaza, you can just do that, and they will die very easily every time. Uh, also, I need to have Sophie stop running away from me. Over here, please. Alright, so now we have Sophie, and that will be one of five for the next group that we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking Sophie into the maintenance tunnels to grab the maintenance tunnel key. The maintenance tunnel key is a very, very important key item, and unfortunately there's really uh, no better time to grab it than right now. Can I get a good driver bonus? Oh no, I'm just banging this car up everywhere. And by the way, the guy in the back of the truck is now the gun that we use to kill him, or kill his friends rather. And that's an M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun. That is a very powerful gun, and the fact that Frank can just use it while standing up without getting knocked around is uh, very, very unusual for a human to do. You forgot this is the long run? Oh yeah, this is the long run. We're going to be doing this for about two hours. <laughs> two and a half hours, actually. Alright. I need to have Sophie get back in the car. There we go. 
and we're going to be going to our next boss fight, which is with Adam the Clown. You're probably wondering why there's a clown in this game. Me too. If you ever find out the answer, let me know. Uh, hopefully Sophie's not going to get stuck on anything here, and hopefully there's not too many zombies at the elevator. Oh good, there are almost none there. Perfect. You're going to be hearing a lot of this. Not too much, because we're not going to spam it, but uh, you're going to be hearing follow me, come on, a lot. So, having Sophie with this boss fight here is a bit uh, inconvenient, because Sophie's AI, well, actually a lot of Survivor's AI, is uh, not programmed too well through cutscenes, so even if I tell her to wait at a point, uh, not only will that point go away through cutscenes, uh, Sophie will not listen to me when I tell her to go wait at a point instead of coming to me through cutscenes. She will run right up to me, stop, and then turn right back around. So uh, I'm going to hopefully kill Adam quickly. By the way, Adam has a like very special property where he can one-hit kill me. Because uh, his damage actually is like applied constantly through frames. Like that. It doesn't do like a flat damage. Cool, that was a bit slow and a bit dangerous. But it could have gone worse. You need to wait for Sophie to come up here so she didn't get mobbed by zombies as soon as I hit this button. And uh, what I meant with like one hit kills and all that, uh, this game. It gives a little bit of mercy to the player. Uh, whenever you would take fatal damage, if you are not at one health exactly, uh, the game will bring you down to one damage, and it will give you one last chance to try to find a healing item or something like that, and if you don't heal after that, you're dead. And uh, one block, one yellow block on my HUD is equal to 1,000 health, so you will bring, you'll be brought to one one-thousandth of a block. It doesn't really display that way, but, you know. It's really tiny. And, uh, Greg here... I don't like Greg. Greg is uh, a bit stupid. He also has a tendency to walk into my bullets. So I need to make sure I don't accidentally shoot him in the head like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave Greg there for a bit while I talk to you and Shinji. Uh, you and Shinji, unfortunately, do not speak English because they are tourists from Japan. We need to grab the conveniently placed Japanese translation magazine to talk to them. I'm gonna set the magazine down here, and I'm going to try to do a skip. And this text skip is a bit inconsistent, and I don't know how it works, because I'm the only person that runs this category. So no one else would know how it works at all. Uh, I'm gonna try... No, okay, never mind. It, it wouldn't work. Uh, for some reason, if you kill a bunch of zombies and then run over to that bridge, on the box that says, um... I think it's like... Be wary of his tricks or something like that. Uh, it'll skip forward about three text boxes in the conversation. However... For some reason, it has a tendency to fail, and if it fails, you have to start the whole conversation over again, which sucks. I'm going to eat this bag of chips. I'm going to give Shinji my shotgun. Please don't shoot me. Alright, come over here, Sophie. Alright. So, something that does not really make sense in any Dead Rising fan's mind. I'm going to tell them to go over there, and then I'm going to completely ignore them and go over here. Oh, Greg has just been eating damage from this one zombie. I'm sure Greg is just, like, completely stubborn and not willing to actually defend himself. The survivor join text looks like bad follow alerts. That's, uh... You know, I never thought of it that way, but that's actually sort of correct. <laughs> But that's how all of the text is shown up on screen for, like, if a survivor dies or defects or gets killed by a zombie and becomes a zombie. It's a bit weird, but you know. Oh, get off me, please! Okay, good. So... 
Under normal circumstances, uh, whenever a survivor is not in the same area as you, as in, like, if you went through a loading zone without them and they just went somewhere else completely, uh, that survivor's name will show up on the left side of the screen and they will start taking damage until you either go back to where they are or they die. However, uh, Greg is a special case because Greg actually didn't join our party yet. And because of that, Greg will actually not take damage while he is off screen. So we're going to leave Greg in that restroom and we're going to go rescue our last party member that we're going to have for this group rescue, who is David, all the way in North Plaza. I'm going to try to not break my skateboard here. Okay, good. There weren't that many zombies in there because that's a very tight alcove to try to get this through. Hi, dude. What's up? And I'm going to grab this nail gun and just shoot at some zombies in the meantime. Oh, by the way, I uh, properly never explained why I'm picking up books. I apologize. Uh, books in this game are actually uh, basically stat buffs. Uh, they do a lot of things. Books can multiply how much experience you receive from taking pictures, killing zombies, uh, multiply how much health you get from food items, and in the case of these books, uh, it multiplies the durability of my weapons and my skateboard by three multiplicatively, and it stacks. So, uh, this, this black magazine right here is Criminal Biography, and the other magazine that I picked up in the very beginning of the run is the Entertainment Magazine. Uh, the Entertainment Magazine applies to the small chainsaw and the skateboard, and the Criminal Biography applies to just the chainsaw. Uh, both of these extend the, the durability of each by three multiplicatively, and it stacks, so my chainsaw is currently at nine times durability, and we're going to be picking up one last book in about uh, maybe about 20 minutes or so. That will extend it even further to 27 times durability, and this will allow us to actually pretty much only use those two chainsaws for the majority of the run. Which is pretty good, because we only visit Wonderland Plaza, like, three times. It would be a bit of a drag to try to, like, come back here multiple times in case our chainsaws broke. They're overpowered as all hell, but, uh, unfortunately that's how the speedrun works. Uh, we're going to tell Sophie, Shinji, and you to stay there as we bring David over to the restroom where Greg is. Unf please stay grounded, David. All right. Greg just revealed a shortcut, shortcut from Wonderland Plaza to Paradise Plaza and vice versa. That is a very handy-dandy shortcut. It cuts through the entirety of the mall, and we're going to be using that a lot over the run. Uh, I just told Sophie, you, and Shinji to go to the bathroom, and I'm going to be skateboarding really far away from the bathroom. So, uh, you'll see there's no zombies over there. You can see you, Shinji, and Sophie off in the distance, but there's no zombies over there. Because, uh, this is an old Xbox 360 game, and despite them wanting to show how powerful the hardware was, they could, it even has its limits. So, uh, what we do under a lot of circumstances is skateboard really far away from where the survivors are or where we want them to go, and this despawns all of the zombies in that area, because the game wants to spawn zombies on the player instead of, uh, AI. And this is very handy for us, because otherwise survivors would start getting stuck on zombies and they'd get grappled, and that wouldn't be a fun time, really. Unfortunately, with David here, we have to very slowly escort him because of his broken leg that he uh, got inflicted on him by a boss that we'll meet later down the line. We're going to tell them to wait there. Hopefully, they're not going to get too stuck. We're going to break this potted plant in the meantime, and... Oh, Grink looks like he's getting a bit beat up here. Get off me, please. Oh, Shinji, what are you... <laughs> you was just punching Shinji! <laughs> Just shooting each other. Oh, that's that. That's this game in a nutshell. If you've never seen this game, they're just, they're just shooting each other, and I'm hitting the people I'm supposed to be rescuing, and they're just sort of standing around punching zombies and not going to where I told them to go. And that's just this game in a nutshell, man. That's probably why no one else runs this. In case you weren't aware. I'm the only person that runs this category. I, I created this category, and I'm the only person with runs on it. <laughs> no one else has been able to successfully uh, get a time that they want to publish, or even complete the run at all. I have no idea. 
But I, I made I made documentation and all that stuff to help people run this category if they wanted to. It's just a matter of finding people that want to do it. All right, I'm running a bit low on health, so I want to kind of be careful here. How's Greg's health looking? I hear him punching stuff. Okay, he's not doing too bad. Please stop punching me. I kind of want to... I want to make him come over here, please. The lead pipe is helpful because, uh, unlike bladed weapons, blunt weapons uh, don't hit multiple targets. So I'm not going to accidentally hit Greg multiple times and kill him. Because that'd be kind of bad. Alright. And this is the hard part, getting them up the ledge. Because, uh... Survivors in this game, they don't like to wait their turn. So you'll start to see them just start running into each other, trying to get up this thing. You can see Sinji and Sophie trying to duke it out. Alright, everyone's on the ledge. We're done. We're good. Alright, we're good. And we can finish this story mission that we started about half an hour ago. <laughs> And we will fast forward from about, uh, what time is it right now? Like 1 a.m. to 6 a.m.? And we fight another boss. And the game will force an autosave on us. I don't think we'll be needing to save throughout the rest of the game at all. But, uh, we might take some safety saves just in case. Alright, so, we need to do another boss, but this one is part of the story mission. Uh, this boss right up here is, uh, Sniper Carlito. Carlito is the guy that we fought back in the food court, but, uh, he's upgraded his P90 submachine gun to a 50 caliber anti-material rifle, and it deals two blocks of health per hit, and we only have six blocks, so we can only tank four bullets before eating, the, uh, eating shit, so to say. Fortunately for us, uh, the devs sort of figured out that this boss was OP, so they left a little bit of a present for us in the form of a hockey stick. Uh, this store right here is the only store in the whole game that spawns the hockey stick, and we're just going to uh, uh, launch pucks at Carlito from over here. If we can actually hit him. There we go. We also want to aim for headshots here, because headshots do 1.5 damage, even with hockey pucks. Unfortunately, Carlito's walked a bit far away, so I kind of want him to start moving over here. Don't walk in the jewelry store, please. Okay, good. Cool beans. He did not walk in the jewelry store, and I didn't have to chase him down. Once we kill Carlito, we instantly get transported back to the security room, which is very convenient because we don't need to be there anymore. And we're going to be doing our next batch of rescuing slash story missions all at the same time. Because uh, this game is all about multitasking. Uh, the next people we're going to be rescuing are Tanya and Ross. And in my opinion, uh, this Tanya and Ross are the hardest people to rescue in the whole game. This game sort of has a very strange difficulty curve. Uh, it's sort of, it's literally like a roller coaster. Uh, it peaks at case two, and then it never quite meets that ever again. I'm not going the right way. We need to go through here again. There we go. I was thinking way too far ahead. And by the way, we can skateboard upstairs. Because Frank West is just a god at everything. He's he, he becomes basically a Street Fighter character at level 50, so we need to give him something to start with. Hi, friends! How we doing? Shut up. <laughs> so, uh, just because I'm rescuing these people don't mean I need to be nice to them. Uh, unfortunately, there's no skip dialogue button in this game, so we need to actually... Uh, we can't do this all the time, but there are some very opportune times where we can punch survivors and make them stop talking and advance the conversation further ahead. Uh, you actually saw that at the very beginning with Kent. Uh, unfortunately for us, we actually need to keep Tanya alive, so I can't really shoot her. 
And uh, this is actually like the second longest conversation in the whole game, and it's all about uh, how Ross is a bit handicapped because uh, the it's implied that Tanya was uh, almost kidnapped by another boss we'll be seeing in the future, and Ross successfully warded off this boss from kidnapping Tanya, and Ross got a bullet to the spine as a result, so he says he can't walk anymore. He kind of can, but he is extremely slow. Oh, and by the way, he's asking for a gun right now. Let me ask you something right now, chat. So, there's two survivors in this game that ask for a gun. One of them is Ross. He's on the floor, handicapped, and clearly still alive. Uh, the other one is Simone Ravendark, who is known to be infected and will become a zombie soon. One of these people, if you give them a gun, shoots them in the head. They shoot themselves in the head and they die. Who are you supposed to give the gun to? Ross? Wrong! If you give Ross a gun, he shoots himself, and Tanya becomes unrescuable because she blames you for his death. So you are not supposed to give a gun to Ross. You are supposed to continue talking to Tanya instead. And uh, by the way, we gave a chainsaw to Tanya because... Not because we need her to have a weapon, but because we need to have an open inventory slot. And Tanya taking the chainsaws is, is uh, the most convenient way to do it. We're going to be grabbing another magazine right here. The skateboarding magazine, which extends the durability of our uh, skateboard by three multiplicatively again. And lets us do a neat little ollie trick. Yourself for having to deal with their shit. I deal with their shit voluntarily. I do it because no one else can. Alright, we're gonna leave Ross right here. Uh, Tanya's going to go to Ross regardless of whether or not I set the waypoint there. And we're going to go get ourselves another submachine gun. Uh, for the next... For the... Not this boss upcoming, but the next boss after that. Get off me, please. Oh, Tanya's a bit stuck. This game likes to hide powerful weapons in really obtuse places. Oh. Keep going, Tanya. Don't get stuck. Oh, hey, Dysis. Dead Rising is the best runs. Unfortunately, no one seems to run it anymore. I'm thinking about putting a bounty out on this category sooner or later. Once I'm once I'm uh my patience runs out with other people running this category, I'll put a bounty out on it to try to beat my record. Eventually. You heard it here first, even though I've said it before. Come on, Tanya. Haven't all the skips already been found? Yes. I guess if you think of it that way. Bounties inspire you. Oh yeah, you got the you you won the bounty for uh, remothered today because you, you won that hundred bucks. Come on, Tanya, get going. Oh, I actually think she's close enough. That's how you make an entrance. Okay. Here's a nice strat that I found on accident. We're going to leave Tanya and Ross right here. I'm going to tell them to wait. And we're going to start the next boss. Steven. Steven, the uh, store owner. Unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing him for that long. <laughs> I love that strat. It's perfect. Uh, so, normally, Tanya and Ross are not there, and Steven is just charging at you with his cart filled with sharp objects that would just, like, completely pummel you. But, uh, fortunately for us, Tanya and Ross are actually closer to him than us, so Steven's first instinct is to try to turn the cart around and attack them instead. And that exposes him to the chainsaw and makes him a very easy target. 
So we grabbed the first aid kit for Brad. Uh, in the cutscene after we defeated Carlito in Entrance Plaza, uh, Carlito shot Brad right in the leg, and it put him in a basically a, a fever-induced coma. So we need to find a first aid kit for him. Come on, Tanya. What are you doing? So we got the first aid kit, so now all we need to do is head back to the uh, security room and deliver the uh, the uh, first aid kit. However, there's another boss we need to defeat because there is an optional mission right at the other end of North Plaza here. And uh, in case you're wondering, that red bar right there means that we have less than three in-game hours to complete this story mission, or uh, about 15 minutes since one in-game hour is, 15, is uh, five real-time minutes. So, we need to defeat another boss and rescue three more people before time runs out. Damn, Tanya is slow. Oh, yeah. Uh, sur female survivors are unfortunately... Uh, they have a slower running animation. Because the way this game assigns how fast things move is, like, by their animation speed, which is really odd, but that's how Frank works with getting speed upgrades. So, we're going to set Ross down... Right here. Over there. We're gonna hope that Tanya doesn't get stuck. Uh, we, we're just not gonna look at Tanya. Follow me. Follow me. We have to wait for her a bit, because uh, if we don't wait for her to come over to where Ross is, she's gonna get swarmed by zombies. And uh, it would take, like, three times longer for her to actually get over to where Ross is. Because as long as Cliff is active, there are no zombies in this part of the mall. Oh, cool. There's a bottle of wine here. All right. Next boss. Uh, Cliff Hudson, voiced by the lovely Steve Bloom. Uh, he is a PSD-inflicted uh, Vietnam War vet. And uh, he thinks we're Viet Cong. Which is pretty bad. Because he's like six foot six and built like a brick house. So, uh, we need to actually bait him out, because he is very agile, despite being, like, I don't know, 55 years old. We're gonna use the machine gun to draw him back into aggro. Because as soon as we hit him with the chainsaw, he he becomes, uh, like, in runaway mode. But when we hit him with the submachine gun, when he's not at low health, he re-enters aggro. And one more chainsaw swipe will do it. Sorry, Cliff. Yeah. Uh, we'll grab his machete real quick, and we'll head right back out. Uh, as you see on the left side of the screen, Tanya and Ross are very slowly losing health the longer I remain outside of North Plaza here. I'm going to clear out some zombies real quick, tell them to wait, and we will go rescue the three people he had held hostage in this empty room. We're going to open the doors a bit, because these three love to just walk into the door and not do anything if the doors aren't opened in that particular fashion. Uh, is that a melon? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to give Tanya this melon so she doesn't die. This is the chainsaw you need. Take it back, please. I would like to take my skateboard back. Uh, let's give you the machete. Why not, buddy? Oh, no. Barbara's not going to come with. Oh, well, none of them came with. Okay. Barbara, get off the trash! Okay, you're good. <laughs> okay, Gun Guru, part two! Who's excited? Because this is another boss fight. We have to actually bring these people through a boss fight to the other side of the Leisure Park area. Fortunately for us, uh, even though the location that the convicts spawn in is pseudo-random, uh, they are never told to spawn over here, where we are right now. And as you can see, they're sort of uh, having a fun time just driving their jeep into a tree repeatedly. You see him over there in the distance, in between some trees? Well, let's just continue to do that until I go over there, or reload the area and make them go somewhere else. Oh no, Rich got caught. Oh boy, here we go.
Get going, come on, please. I ain't paying money for you to stand around. You know what the sad part is? The full version of this song isn't even in the game. It cuts off at like three minutes, even though the song is like four and a half minutes long. Tanya, what are you doing? Oh, Jesus, I just hit Ross. <laughs> Ross has seen better days, but uh, I think we can help him a little bit. Alright, go up the stairs while I get Ross a bag of chips. Oh no. Do you like that survivors... So, the funny thing, whenever a survivor gets grappled, all other survivors that are near the survivor that is getting grappled will just stand still and do nothing. Even if they have a weapon that could prevent them from getting grappled, they will just stand there and do nothing. So, when Rich, when Rich got grappled, Barbara just stood there and watched. Not completely un incapable of helping, but completely unwilling. Is someone grappled right now? Oh god, Josh, come on. Alright, we're gonna have to skateboard over there real fast, because Josh got stuck very, very early on. And Tanya's sort of not really looking to get helping them they're all in here. Come on, hurry up! Standing there studying defense strategies. Yeah, I'm sure that's how it works. Well, in the meantime, let's refresh our skateboard. I usually don't refresh my skateboard here, but uh, I'm already up here, and I have to wait for these people to go all the way to the other end of the mall here. Oh boy, Josh, what did I just tell you? You have a machete. You're, you're like the most capable out of everybody here. Barbara, you're punching Ross. You're not helping me, you're punching Ross. Alright. We're almost there. That timer's ticking down, but we'll get there soon. Oh yes, uh, I need to trade my chainsaw uh, with Tanya because she has the one that is at zero durability, or she has the one that is uh, not been used at all, and I would like to have that because this one is about like halfway through. I'll also take this queen for later. Get going, please. What are y'all doing? You, you you good? Oh, I didn't tell you to go over there. I'm sorry. I'm like, why are you just standing there? Oh, it's because I told you to stand over there, not over there. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to forget things. Alrighty. That, that's pretty much the hardest part of the game. Like, bar none, so I'm very glad that that went as cleanly as it did. I'll take this back. And, uh, they're sort of having problems here. Let me, let me clear up some space for you, buddy. There you go. Alright. There you go. Okay, everyone's in here, but we're not quite done. We still need to hand in the first aid kit and find that, uh, erotica photo. Sexy kneecaps. Yeah. It's supposed to be an upskirt shot, but uh, it focuses on the kneecaps. Yeah. And we have now fulfilled the requirement for Kent, so we won't have to worry about that anymore. And we're not going to be taking any more pictures for the rest of the game, so quite a photojournalist we are.
Oh, I didn't mean to flying dodge. Looks like you've been vomiting blood. Oh no, it's a nose it's it's a nosebleed cuz this game is Japanese. That's how it works, right? Okay, so right off the bat we're going to be met with Pamela. Uh Pamela's getting swarmed by zombies. That's why I have this. Heather's going to complain we need to punch her to get her to stop talking. You're still getting swarmed. Wow, okay. Come on. All right. Heather, I need to come in here. Okay, good. All right. Oh, Pamela, you you jumped you jumped out of the fountain. I need you to come here, please. Good, okay, she did not get stuck, and she's not really at low health, so uh, I am more than happy with how this turned out. So, uh, unfortunately, we can't just bring them back right away. There's one more person that we need to go get, and that is Gordon. Uh, he is all the way back in Entrance Plaza. Oh, Pam didn't come with me. Pam, you need to come with me. So, uh, this is a sort of an anomaly of how this game works. Uh, there can only be eight survivors in the mall at one time that you can recruit into your party. If the game is scheduled to start another side mission that would bring the total number of survivors over the eight limit, then that mission won't start until enough survivors are either rescued or dead so that the cap isn't hit. For some reason or another, Heather and Pamela are, uh, of... They're, what's the word I'm thinking of? They're an exception to the rule. For some reason, Heather and Pamela don't spawn in until either Tanya or Ross are rescued or dead specifically. Like, they don't even consider... They consider the eight survivor limit second before Tanya and Ross specifically not being involved anymore. And I don't quite understand why. But it's annoying because this makes this, seg this segment uh, a bit longer than it should be. Anyway, we're going to ride our skateboard into Gordon so that he stops sobbing on the floor and uh, hopefully stops spinning in circles and tries to run away from me. Go. Go over the counter. All right, run a bit further away from the counter. Good. Thanks, buddy. So the reason I did that is because uh, I set a waypoint all the way over there for uh, Hemmer, Hemmer, Heather and Pamela to stay over there. If I didn't hit Gordon with my skateboard, he would still be behind the counter, and Gordon's first course of action to head towards the waypoint is to just run into the corner of the wall repeatedly. So I need him to get over the counter in order for him to actually properly be able to follow me. And it's annoying. But thankfully, it's not as long as it should have been, because uh, prior to about a month ago, I actually didn't know you could do that, so... What I had to do is to hand carry Heather and Pamela to Gordon and then bring everyone back here. It's incredibly annoying to do that, so I'm really glad I don't have to anymore. Where are you, Gordon? Queen in action. Here we go. Come on, Gordon. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. Stop doing a flying dodge. Uh, I'm not trying to do it, and it's very easy to misinput a flying dodge, because all you have to do is hit the same direction on the analog stick twice in quick succession. That's all you have to do. Oh, I don't want to give that to you. Uh, I want to give this to you. You're sort of at low health, and I don't want to take any chances here. Oh, thank you, Captain Duck, for the raid. I greatly appreciate it. Welcome to Dead Rising. We're currently helping about three of about 48 idiots rescue themselves from the zombie apocalypse in this very quaint mall in Colorado. Please enjoy me running around with my colorful chainsaw and colorful clothing as I just cause copious amounts of blood to spew from every possible orifice on these zombies. All right, what time is it? About 11.55. Uh, the scoop with Kent happens at noon, so we actually save about uh, five minutes. A good 25-second time save. Sometimes you actually take a little bit too long to get there, so I'm glad that I was actually able to save just a slight amount of time here. 
Hi, Kent. How we doing? You just stand around acting like a moron? All right. Well, we're talking to Kent here. We need to grab one more magazine, which is the engineering magazine. This fully completes our chainsaw here. Get your best erotica photo ready. Oh, boy, will I. So, upon showing Kent the good enough photograph, he gets really upset and claims that it's a beginner's look, and he gives us one more contest at noon tomorrow. So, we need to wait about another maybe 45 minutes before he shows up again. And uh, unfortunately, I ate shit over that railing. Getting the ollie overneath that railing without bonking is incredibly difficult. The, like, it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> All right, on our way back again, and once we actually hand these people in, we'll be able to start another story mission that we will ignore for about another, I don't know, 25 minutes, because a lot of stuff happens on day two. Overneath, yes. That's the funny thing about English. You can just make up words, and if enough people agree with you, it'll become a word. That's how speedrunning works, too, if you think about it. Are we going to have a fight here? Or is everyone going to come cleanly? Okay. Oh, uh, Pamela, that's not where the ledge is. Pamela. There you go, buddy. All right, so... Uh, I forgot to mention this before, but when Steven came out from the ether with his cart. Uh, he actually had a hostage in the cart with him. And, uh... Upon rescuing her, she just sort of, like, fucked off and blamed us for this entire zombie apocalypse deal. And, uh, we saw her again on the security cameras, so we need to go chase after her and ask what she knows about all this. Oh, by the way, there's a cult now? I hope you're taking notes if you're, uh, having a little bit of trouble understanding everything that's happening in the mall. A lot of stuff happening, I know, but uh, it's a matter of respect to understand the lore. Oh, don't... Okay, good. <laughs> that guy on the left was reaching in his pocket for knockout gas. Uh, if I got hit with that knockout gas, I would die. Well, not die. I'd get knocked out, and I would get transported to another part of the mall with all of my weapons taken away from me and all of my clothing taken away from me. So I would like to avoid getting stolen by the cult at all. Also, this is Ronald. He's very hungry. He is so hungry, he permanently removed all of the spawns of food from Jill's Sandwiches. And yes, the name of the restaurant is, in fact, Jill's Sandwiches. Because this is a Capcom game. We're gonna rescue Jennifer. And we're gonna bring them into our next boss fight with uh, Joe Slade. Uh, do I have a queen here still? Yes, I do. Okay, good. I almost became a Jill sandwich. I almost became a fucking Jill coma. But, uh, if you'll remember, I said that uh, Ross became paralyzed because uh, Tanya was going to be kidnapped by someone and Ross had to protect her. Uh, we're actually going to be fighting the person that attempted to kidnap Tanya here. Uh, Joe Slade is a female cop with a penchant for kidnapping young, attractive women and sexually abusing them until they are dead. And that's pretty not good, so we're going to try to put a stop to that. Unfortunately for us, we have to wait for these two to catch up with us. Oh. There we go, we're good. Okay, do you want to come with me? Regardless of whether or not they want to come with me, I actually have two more people to rescue on top of the boss fight. So, uh... Oh, there's no queen right here. Oh, well. I would rather have Tanya... or Not Tanya and Ross. Uh, Jennifer and Ronald make their way over here fast than... Trying to wait here. Okay. So, Nick and Sally. Uh, Nick and Sally are an unannounced scoop. They just show up right next to Joe's boss fight. 
And uh, we need to sort of clear all the zombies out here. If I had multiple queens or if another queen was in this horde, this would be a lot easier, but I have to do it a little bit of the slow way. I would like to hit you, sir. Not hit you again. Oh, by the way, uh, those yellow camera markers on those survivors was uh, a hint that I would get a large amount of experience if I took a picture of them in that pose, but I actually don't need levels, so uh, we skipped doing that. Anyway, Joe, I've talked her up a lot. Let's see how long she lasts. So everything's sort of a disappointment in this, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so, uh, through all of those loading screens, uh, that waypoint went away. Uh, Nick is on the floor crying. That's fine with me, whatever. Nick has cowardly AI, so he'll often crawl around on the floor, get on his hands and knees and start sobbing, uh, generally have a, a complete mental breakdown. And just ignore that for now. Okay, we have everybody free. Let's get going. Uh-oh, Nick's having a little bit of an issue here. I'm here, buddy. I'm here to help you. Oh, no. Okay, we're good. Uh, for some reason or another, the survivors have a really tough time coming down these stairs. Like, they'll just stop at some points for no particular reason. Okay, they're all down the stairs. Good. Go over there. You want to have a gun? Have a gun. Have a blast. Yeah! He got a gun! And because Nick has the cowardly AI, if for some reason Nick were to die, he has a chance of having a special cutscene where he takes the gun I gave him and blows his brains out. That's a fun little fact, isn't it? I guess we have a loose definition of the word fun. Uh-oh, I think they're getting stuck on each other. Nobody in this game likes to take turns or go in a single file line. I did not want to I did not want to read the magazine, excuse me. Alright, no one's at low health except for Nick. I think Nick will be fine. You want to go in there? No, Jennifer. I will hold your hand and make you come with me. Over here. Come on. K, please make it in on your own. For some reason, K doesn't have the hold hands AI. She holds. She can hold the light weaponry, and that's it. K, get going. And they're just sort of screaming while trying to bump into each other repeatedly. Okay, so uh, now that the cult has spawned into the mall, there is there are either one or two groups of cultists. On the other side of this wall, there's always one over near the warehouse door, and there may or may not be another one over near the toy store. Okay, good. I got the bad RNG. Whatever. More more experience for me. We just have to hope we don't get uh, knocked out. And uh, the reason I have to go out of my way to kill the cult here is because the cultists do not deal damage proportionate to uh, zombies. They deal damage pro proportionate to bosses. And uh, if the survivors were trying to fight these guys one-on-one, -on -one, they'll die in about three to five stabs of the knife, and that's not good. So we need to kill all the cultists beforehand. And uh, because every single cultist in there is registered as a boss, uh, the survivors, despite me telling them to wait at the door, will try to attack the bosses because that's what their AI is programmed to do, because they thought that was a good idea. You wanna, you wanna let me get to the door, please? There we go. Me. 
The knives do hurt, yes. However, every other knife-wielding enemy is a zombie, and it deals less proportionate damage because... The way the bosses are programmed is that they're supposed to deal damage to Frank, who can have anywhere between 4 and 12 blocks of health. Uh, proportionately speaking, all of the survivors in this game don't get extra health, so... Like... When you, when you go through the game, every survivor has the same amount of health based on whether... Um... What is it again? I think if it's they're a guy or a girl. If they're a guy, they have 5,000 max health. If they're a girl, they have 3,500 max health. And each knife stab deals 1,000 damage. And it's just like a little flesh wound slash. So it's not like a full stab to the heart. It's just like a little flesh wound on the, th on the torso. And that would still kill him, so... Fortunately enough for us, we're actually not going to be dealing with the cult for much longer, because they're only in the mall for about 12 hours. And we're just going to do a little mix of holding hands with different survivors here to make it so that they have room to get up on the ledge. Okay, get up the ledge, please. Janet! Come on. Please. Uh-oh. Okay. We have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're good. It should be all eight of them. Yes, that's all eight. Good job, me. Or rather, good job, AI. So, there's another boss fight. You know, this game is just filled with bosses. There's another one in Entrance Plaza now at 5 p.m., and, uh... The, th this is probably, like, the easiest boss fight in the game, despite it being three on one. So this is the Hall family. Uh, it consists of Roger Hall, the father, Jax Hall, the older son, and Thomas Hall, the younger son. Uh, they want to kill me because it is their god-given right as Americans to defend themselves, even though I actually did not attack them. So, they have the desire to attack me, and I'm going to kill them now. Come here, Thomas. Well, Thomas actually has bad aim, so I'm just gonna let him go. Ah! Come here, buddy. Alright, so I need to hit them in a very particular fashion here. Uh, if I try to just, like, like wildly abandon swinging my weapon at them, uh, they'll cancel their stun animation. If I wait for their stun animation to finish, then I can hit them again and then just start the stun animation over. And that's all three Hall family members, dead as Disco. Every boss in this game... Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this. If y'all have ever seen a Kingdom Hearts 2 speedrun, they talk about revenge values for bosses, where if you hit them so much or deal enough damage to hit the revenge value, uh, they'll be able to act out of a stun animation and hit you. It's sort of like that in Dead Rising. Uh, every boss has a unique stun value where you can either hit them enough times where it'll cancel their stun animation, or they'll just be able to randomly act out of their stun animation anyway. So, for example, Joe has a random value of anywhere between 0 and 2 extra hits during her stun animation, while she'll be able to immediately act out of it. Uh, the Hall family all have a stun value of 0, so uh, if they're in their stun animation, they will always immediately act out of the stun animation and run away from you. So we would like to time our attacks so that it just constantly stun locks them. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do it because I got shot by them repeatedly. Uh, but, you know, that's how speedrunning works. It doesn't really go the way you want to. Oh, and by the way, this is Floyd Sanders, the longest conversation in the game. Excuse me! Water. This is the longest conversation in the game, and I just have to sit here and spam B a lot. The normal ones, I just pull out my phone here. But, you know, it's a bit inconsiderate of me. All right. Thankfully, I was able to talk for long enough. And we're going to tell him to wait over there. There's another survivor down here in Grandma's Kids. Help me. 
And, uh, unfortunately, Jolie lost her friend. Uh, she's not dead, but, uh, she got left behind on the floor with no zombies and three just family members waiting to kill everybody. Jolie, you want to come with me? Jolie? There you go, girl. Come on. All right, we're going to take this phone call now. I thought I skipped this text box, but whatever. All right, so this is the first mission in the game where we actually have to uh, take the phone call for this mission, because otherwise it doesn't happen. And uh, Ronald, the guy that we rescued before, is now hungry again, even though we gave him food to begin with. And if the next time we uh, visit the security room, if we don't give them food, uh, he will kill himself and every single survivor he is holed up with in the room. And that's not good, so uh, we need to take that bag of chips we got and give it to Ronald. Otherwise, the run would be dead. And that's not good. He doesn't actually kill them, but uh, his idea is to, like, take all of survivors, go back into the zombie-infested mall and find food, and the game just immediately considers them dead. All right, Julie and Rachel, they decide to hug again. You know what we do with people that hug, right? Spit on them. Spit on them to stop the hug. All right, we need to talk to Rachel. We need to bump into her. She says, no, get away from me, and then she just joins immediately with the conversation skipped. Unfortunately, the text box that said, no, get away from me, uh, only showed up for about a few frames, so you couldn't see it. But she immediately just says, get away from me, and then she starts following you. And there's one more person here that was being accosted by the snipers that we killed. He's hiding back here. We just need to talk to him for a little bit, and we will have everybody in group seven. What are we doing here? Let's see if Wayne does the, the electric slide. He does! He did the electric slide! I don't know why survivors do that sometimes. It's really stupid, and I really don't like when they do that, because they don't listen to directions. Unless I spam follow me button. But, uh... Wayne is a very interesting culprit of this, because he does that a lot. Uh-oh. They're having a bit of an issue up there. Unfortunately, uh, Floyd is a bit old. Floyd is actually exactly 69 years old, so he has a bit of an issue walking sometimes, and we need to carry him, because otherwise he'll just start uh, running very slowly. Thankfully, there's only two survivors in this game that are physically incapacitated due to age. Please hurry up. What are y'all doing? Oh my god, everyone is just getting stuck here. <laughs> Please hurry up. Do you want me to hold hands? Rachel, where are you going? No. Stop that. No. Come here. Rachel, okay. Another missed input flying dodge. Okay, are they going down the escalator? They are. Good. And then Wayne got grappled by the only zombie there. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Please hurry up, Wayne. This group usually doesn't give me this much trouble, considering that uh, this area is rather light on zombies and the group that we're carrying is smaller than average, but uh, there's a first time for everything. And guess what? The cultists showed up again. Uh, we need to make sure that they don't accidentally get themselves killed trying to fight like a 1 on 14 battle with guys with knives and dynamite, so... I think we're good. Alright, everyone's here. I saw that queen over there. Pretty handy to do that before picking up Floyd. Alright, here's the stupid thing. For some reason or another, uh, so Ronald's Appetite, the, the mission that we got to talk to Ronald to make sure he doesn't accidentally get everyone killed, uh, that mission lasts until, I think, 1 a.m.? However, if we enter the security room, for any reason, the timer for that mission instantly hits zero, and if we leave the security room without giving him food, everyone dies. So, we need to 
Make sure we don't accidentally try to preemptively leave. Give me back my chainsaw, Wayne. Go over there, please. Over there. We'll hold Wayne just to make sure, or not Wayne Floyd, to make sure that he doesn't interfere with other people. Oh no. Rachel, just let him take his turn, please. I really owe you one. You're on your way home from a party and your friend proposed to her boyfriend. Congratulations, and I hope that it works out for the best of them. For the both of them, excuse me. It works out for the best for the both of them. There we go. Okay, we need to not accidentally eat the food. If we eat the food, the run is dead. <laughs> Technically. Excuse me, I'm a bit flustered by Wayne just repeatedly getting grappled. So this is the first of two mutinies. Uh, the next one is going to be happening in about uh, maybe 20 minutes from now. 25 minutes, perhaps. Uh, each mutiny is unique. Fortunately, this is the only mutiny that actually requires prior action. Uh, the other mutiny, you just have to talk to a guy a lot. Fun fact, there is a one-frame window where the game does not register you as giving the food. It actually registers you as just repeatedly talking to him. And we need to wait for Mutiny Averted to show up. If we did not wait for Mutiny Averted to show up, it would actually still fail the mission. This game's a bit picky sometimes. Alright, we have rescued everybody for day two. We are all done. All we need to do now is the story mission and one more optional boss fight that has no hostages associated with it. And we get to hear Gone Guru one more time. Well, actually not one more time. This think there's uh, maybe three more times. Fortunately, we don't have any more survivors with us, so all we have to do is just skateboard over to North Plaza. Relatable Ronald is his new name. Because everyone loves food. To be fair, who wouldn't love food? It's like, if I offered you a fried chicken sandwich right now, would, unless you were a vegan or a vegetarian, would you turn that down? Or a pescatarian, I suppose. Depending on your taste, you still love food. Because vegans still love food. You can make a mean goddamn stir-fry. All right, Cletus. Cletus is our next boss. He is the owner of the gun store, and thankfully, he is not as frustrating as he could be. We're gonna jump over here. I'm gonna grab a bottle of wine just in case. He's gonna throw us, and we're just gonna hit him again. Is it like the Double Decker where the bread is also fried chicken? No, but if it was offered on a brioche bun toasted and covered with spicy mayonnaise, I'm sure it would still be a pretty good deal, wouldn't it? Anyway, uh, since this is shots fired, it's probably pretty appropriate that we need to grab some guns. So we're going to be grabbing two shotguns from the gun store and we're using it on our, our next boss, who is literally right around the corner, uh, Isabella Keys. Uh, Isabella is the sister to Carlito, the mastermind behind this whole thing, although we don't know that yet. Spoilers. I'm just going to be skipping through cutscenes. It's not like you can tell anyway. And uh, Isabella is the stupidest fight in this game, bar none. I, I hate this boss. There is no reason she should be as hard as she is, but we're going to be doing a nice little glitch to make this boss fight easier. By constantly uh, loading and unloading our shotgun by swapping inventory items repeatedly. Just like that. Uh, if you're familiar with Metal Gear Solid speedruns, who I believe actually Metal Gear Solid 2 was uh, a speedrun earlier today, uh, rapidly swapping between weapons will instantly cancel any uh, cooldown for single-fire weapons such as the pistol or the shotgun or the sniper rifle. Or the, or the real Megabuster if you're actually doing that in a run. 
if you want to do new game plus. Oh, and by the way, she's not dead. She's right here. Uh, she did not get injured by us shooting her repeatedly with a shotgun multiple times. She got injured by Carlito shooting her in, with a pistol in the leg once. So uh, now we need to bring Isabella over to the security room because now she wants to be on our side because her brother shooting her with a pistol in the leg just for wanting to talk to a guy is a pretty dick move. Kindle, protect yourself. Kindle, protect yourself. Cool. All right, so we're going to carry Kindle with us into our next boss. Uh, so we have 15 minutes to transport Isabella from here to the security room and bring along Kindle as well. However, because we're a speedrunner, we're actually going to do yet another optional boss fight on the way to delivering Isabella to the security room because we're just going to have to go a little bit faster than normal. Kindle, come on. Alright. He's close enough now. Alright, so... Uh, you would be hearing Goron Guru right now. Although, uh, there is actually story music that overrides all other background music going on right now with this side mission. That includes Gone Guru and uh, the next song for the upcoming boss fight with Sean. So if you liked uh, Bored Again... I'm sorry to say you're not going to hear it in this speed run. And, like I said, you would hear Gone Guru. The convicts are still alive. This is a boss fight arena. If I see the convicts, they're all the way over there. If the convicts were over here, they would want to fight me and they would want to kill me and everyone in my party. Fortunately enough, though, I know the route for this. We're going to be hearing Gone Guru like two more times, though. Don't worry. Thank you for shooting me, Kindle. and actually got Isabella off my back. So, uh, remember when I said that Greg didn't take damage for being off screen because he never properly joined our party? Uh, that's the same case for Isabella. We're just going to leave Isabella there for a minute. And she's not going to take damage for being off screen while we deal with this next boss. I'm going to hope that Kindle is close enough. Okay, good. Kindle, uh, go over there. Are you actually going over there, Kindle? Good. Sometimes Kindle doesn't like to listen to my directions. Uh, I'm gonna make a cut through here. And I have to kill Sean before Kindle actually comes back over to me. Simple enough, right? Alright, and we got one more thing to do. A bunch of cultists storm the room, and we need to kill them like so. You want to pull out your dynamite? No? Are you going to pull out tear gas? No? Okay, you're good. Or not tear gas, knockout gas. Mm. Uh, how's Kindle doing? Oh, he's stuck. He's got a sword! He does, but we have a chainsaw! That's slightly better. I'm just gonna shoot Kindle and get him free. Sometimes it's better to just shoot the survivor that's being costed instead of, you know, helping them properly. Alright, we're gonna tell him to wait there while we rescue all five of these people that were tied up here. Oh yeah, I forgot to show off a silly glitch. Uh, this doesn't save time, but uh, we'll do it soon. Cheryl, come over here. Cheryl? My name's Harry Mason. Come over here, please. He is really concerned. I tried to, like, stop Beth's dialogue and override it with Cheryl's, but uh, it didn't quite work out. Alright, we got one more person here. Are you 
And we're going to grab one more book here. This is Brainwashing Tips. Brainwashing Tips is a very unique book in that it actually overrides Survivor AI to be one consistent set which uh, removes cowardice and it removes dependency. So that is a very powerful thing, in my opinion. We're going to set them to go over there and uh, try to escort everybody on route. We're going to steal the shotgun back from Kindle because his has more ammo. I don't know why I killed that zombie. Okay, is everyone making their way over? We have all six of them, right. Okay, good. Uh-oh. Are you alright? Kicks you in the face. I meant to kick the zombie, but whatever works. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry! Get going. Alright, we get to do one more thing. But, uh, this is a bit important. I need to make sure that none of the survivors over here are spinning in place, like Beth is. Beth was spinning in place because she was off she was uh, off the rails for her survivor pathing node. And that is very bad because if that happens that means that she'll just continue to spin in place until I do something about it. And I need her to not be spinning in place because we're going to be doing a uh, zombie camera manipulation. They're used to, they're called Isabella manipulations because this strategy was found for uh, all main missions speedrunning, but uh Technically, we're not doing this to manipulate Isabella's AI, we're doing it to manipulate all six of them back there. We have about uh, seven and a half minutes left to rescue everybody. We're doing all right. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna clear out some zombies here to make sure that Isabella doesn't get grabbed and we're gonna skateboard all the way over here. I hope my skateboard doesn't break in the meantime. If it does, it's fine, but uh, you know, that's ah, fine, whatever. Alright, we're gonna grab another skateboard. Oh no. Isabella got grappled. That's dumb. I thought I purposefully stopped everybody from doing that, but uh, I need to I need for her to get hit again. If at all possible. That's a bit of an annoying thing to happen, but uh. Yeah. Okay, she got hit. That's good. Don't get grappled again, please. Oh no. Now they're getting grappled. Are we good? They're shooting their shotgun. This manipulation's not working out too well. I might just have to do this manually. What are they doing? Oh. They keep they keep getting stuck and then they keep getting unstuck. That's very annoying. Okay, they're not grappled anymore. Oh god, Ray still is. Fuck. Me. Really, dude. Okay, no, they're good. Uh, we're all good! They're not- they're not stuck. The manipulation can go on. And this is, in fact, the manipulation, is us just standing in this stairwell doing nothing, because it is so far removed from everything that uh, no zombies load. That's the proper way to get over that railing. How's everyone's health doing? Eh, it could be worse, could be better. Does that despawn zombies near him or something? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, I'm not too confident in their health levels here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them to go over there. Do I have knee drop? Oh, I do. I'm level 30. Okay, I have knee drop. Knee drop is like the best move in this game besides the bicycle kick. Because when Frank reaches level 50, he's basically a Street Fighter character with his uh, physical ability. And being able to just like do somersault kicks that instantly decapitate zombies. Falling a bit far behind here. Not too much, but uh, it could be worse. 
Yeah, I got another five minutes. This isn't very fast, but it's fast enough for the game to not instantly fail us. All right, and fortunately, because Isabella is completely incapable of walking up this ledge, the game just automatically saves everybody as soon as we get near the ledge while carrying her. And that will instantly clear case five and case six, because case six is just a cutscene. May you ask why Dead Rising 4 was bad? Was it the gameplay or the story? It was a lot of things. Uh, the example being is that I think the devs were over-promising things that they couldn't deliver on. Uh, it was rushed because they wanted to meet a holiday season deadline. Uh, the devs were saying, like, we want to go back to the roots of the game with Dead Rising 4, and they didn't. Uh... If you want to know why it's bad, the lead voice actor for Frank West in Dead Rising 4 was uh, the Walking Dead actor, uh, Ty Olson. Ty Olson didn't want to be credited in this in Dead Rising 4. He went under the pseudonym Victor Noslo. I just realized I went the, wrong, the slightly wrong direction. But I don't know. There's a, there is a lot to Dead Rising 4 that, uh, that went wrong with it, and it's... I blame the CEOs of Capcom Vancouver and, like, forcing them to rush a game rather than the game devs being completely incapable. Maybe it was a bad project lead, I have no idea. But, uh, the, the project lead for Dead Rising 4, uh, went back to work for EA to make My Sims games after Dead Rising 4, shortly after Cap- shortly before Capcom Vancouver shut down, so it's a bit of a very complicated situation. Probably more than I know and more than anything in the public knows, but that is... It's very, like, you can see YouTube videos and all this sort of thing, you know, but... Oh, I'm, I apologize. Uh, let me just shot here for a bit. Okay, we're good. So, uh, this is the gun store trio. Uh, remember that picture of the vent that I took, like, at the very beginning of the run? Uh, that's, that's for this. I need to break the motorcycle. It's probably a bit too close to them. And this conversation takes a while, so... Just make sure that everything's cleared out here. Considering that Dead Rising 4 uses Dead Rising 3's game engine, it was... like... It was the first Dead Rising game to use a different game engine. Or is the first Dead Rising game to use the same game engine as the other one? Excuse me, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, maybe that's outside the scope of this speedrun. Maybe it isn't! Who knows? There's a lot to talk about, and I need to kill a lot of time while I'm waiting for this conversation to happen, because I can't skip any of it. If I punch them, or if I damage them, or if I walk past Jonathan, they will all start shooting at me again, and they will probably not want to talk to me ever again, and they will become completely irrescuable. So, uh, I try not to mess with their AI at all. We all good? Okay, we're all good. Good. Everybody jump over the counter. Good. They didn't get stuck. Okay, wait out there. I'm going to be grabbing some more guns because the guns respawned from the last time I was here. And, uh, is that gun that Brett has there? That is actually a unique gun. Oh, by the way, I need to take this phone call for uh, Floyd the Somalier. Twitch? Did Twitch die? Fixed. Maybe something went wrong, who knows. Uh, Brett has a very powerful gun. He has the machine gun. Uh, one word. No space. Machine gun. Uh, the machine gun is a 150 round clip and it is extremely powerful, so uh, we would like to steal that from him when we get the chance. Hopefully not accidentally shoot anybody in the head with our shotgun, though. And, uh, I'm not a gun nut, but as far as I can tell, that is a very huge anomalation of a gun. Like, the gun that Brett has, it looks like it just has a bunch of parts, like, aftermarketed onto it. 
I need you to go over there, please. Stop it. Oh my god, I hit Brett twice and I didn't hit the zombie that he was trying to walk through. Oh my lord. Are we all good? Come over here, please. Uh, we're good. Okay, good. Thankfully, we don't have to carry anybody through this, so we can just enjoy Gone Guru in a much less stressful environment. I like to use the shotgun over the chainsaw when I can, because you can keep moving with the chainsaw, or the, the shotgun, excuse me. With the chainsaw, you have to stop and swing it, but with the shotgun, you can just keep moving. Oh my god, Jonathan, please. Not over... Th Why are you walking over there? Stop it. I need to make sure to not shoot Brett in the head, and if I aim anywhere near his head, that pellet will... will go right into his forehead, pierce his skull, and kill him in a bloody mess. I guarantee it. And zombies with uh, hard hats on are bulletproof in the head, so they will take no damage from headshots. Uh, let's steal Brett's gun from right now. You want to go over there? Y'all good? Why are you walk? Why are you walking to me? Go over there, please, and thank you. All right, we're gonna do the same thing as last time, except I guarantee that it will work this time because we do not need to actually drop Isabella off at that uh door. It is a tactical gun. I have no idea what it's based off of, or what it even really is made of. If it has, like, real-world counterparts, because it looks so messy. It has, like, a it has like a flashlight, a scope, an, under, an underbarrel grenade launcher, a laser sight. Oh my lord, it's like a Payday 2 gun. I love the way Frank holds it, because... Because Frank doesn't have any firearms experience. So he he just holds guns however and just uses guns however. But then again, he can just like auto-aim snap and wield a Browning M250 caliber machine gun while standing completely still and just hold it in his hands. But uh, fortunately enough, this gun actually isn't too necessary. I just like to have it for freeing up survivors and grapples without having to go up to them. Oh, nice ollie. You still good? You know, Brett. That's not that not that way, Brett. This way. Do I know wall jump yet? Oh, I do. Oh my God, are you serious? How many how how how, how many zombies are over this way? You want to bet? You got grappled by the one zombie that was near you, Brett. Come on. You have a shotgun. Use it. This entire run has just been me shouting at survivors. Alyssa, why are you in the elevator? The chainsaw is indestructible now. Not quite. Uh, the base durability for the chainsaw is 80. Is uh, 80 hits. And we have mu we are currently extending the durability by 27 times multiplicatively. So I believe 80 times 27 is 2,440. So it can take 2,440 hits before breaking. Which is uh, a lot. Way more than necessary for the run, if we have two of them. Alright, we're going back out again. With the time fast-forwarding, it is now bright out. The sun has come up. Was that zombie slightly chainsaw-proof? Uh, no. So, 
this game tries to be realistic in ways. So, for example, whenever you fire a gun, the gun doesn't spawn the bullet from, like, inside Frank's model. The bullet actually spawns inside the barrel of the gun, and the bullet actually has travel time as well. So... Like, hitboxes are extremely specific. The chainsaw as well, so, like... Not all of Frank's arm is a hitbox, it's literally just the chainsaw. And I was so close to that zombie with the swing arc, my arm went through the zombie without... ...described with the, the uh, gun barrel. You can actually point a gun through glass and it will fire the bullet through the glass without breaking it. Oh hi, the convicts are here! Will they hit me? Nuked stream. Oh. I have dropped a slight amount of frames. Oh, no. I thought... We, I was hoping we would fix this. It's fine now? Okay, good. Let me take out my rage on the restream by kicking Gil. We actually do need to kick a Gil. It was not just out of my frustration. Uh, kicking Gil actually makes him give a slightly faster conversation. And I'm going to be breaking all these wine bottles so I don't accidentally pick up some of it when I try to uh, carry him. Because uh, Gil actually needs to be uh, carried, much like any other physically incapacitated survivor. But Gil is so drunk that he cannot walk straight. So we need to give him an over-the-shoulder support. And we need to walk away from him, because otherwise he won't uh, continue the conversation, and this constitutes walking away from him. I normally thought you had to, like, leave the entire restaurant here, but no, if you just jump here, it counts. Nope. Okay, so we need to bump into Gil... Stop. We need to bump into Gil to make sure he doesn't drink his wine. Not because it would make him more drunk, but because he doesn't need to drink anymore, because he's already at full health. All right, so another boss. Uh, the second to last optional boss in the game is over there in the, uh, I forget what it's called. Fine Gal's Shoes or something like that. It's something like that, but anyway. Uh, Leroy is here. He's a sick guy. He's probably infected with the zombie virus, but uh, we don't care. We want to save him anyway. I'm just going to unload my gun and auto-aim everywhere. Uh, is there a queen anywhere around here? There is one over there. No, there's not one over there. He's just looking at his face. Whatever. Anyway, here's my favorite survivor in the game, Susan Walsh. Susan Walsh is a nice little old lady, and nothing bad ever happens to her. Come on, Susan. Oh, there was a zombie of the queen right there. Alright, so... Nice guy, boss, right here. Uh, Paul Carson is an arsonist, and he is threatening to burn down this entire store because two, gr two girls looked at him funny. Oh no, come back here, prick. Wow, he's being a slippery little boy right there. And believe it or not, this boss actually doesn't die yet. So, uh, while Paul's crotch is burning, we're going to get a fire extinguisher and put him out. And to talk to these fine ladies that were being held hostage. And I'm sure that uh, these two women, Mindy and Debbie, will act just fine trying to be rescued alongside their captor that threatened to burn them down because you looked at me and laughed. Go over there, please. Don't try to go up the stairs. Go no, don't go to me. Go over there. Please. Okay, Paul actually listened. He's not going up the stairs. That's good. 
Oh my goodness. You are just the most useless piece of shit, ain't you, zombie? It's been a while since Paul actually got away from me, so, uh... The way it works is that Paul never acts out of his stun animation, but if you hit him too many times during the stun animation, uh, he gets, like, a resistance to getting stunned for a little bit to make sure that you just don't completely mop the floor with him. But you can still completely mop the floor with him anyway. It's just a matter of whether or not you actually, like, mindful, mindlessly spam the attack button or not. And unfortunately, Susan has a little bit of a hard time walking because of her age. I think she's like 78 years old, so we need to carry her out of here by hand. Not only is Paul... Paul's destiny was destined by his last name being Carson. Would you figure that anyone with the last name of Carson would be destined to become an arsonist. I'm just gonna stand here and shoot a bunch. Uh, I could use my chainsaw here, but we don't really need this machine gun for much longer. Okay, good. Who made it out of the bathroom yet? Is everyone having problems? Yeah, they're, they're, they're having an issue here. <laughs> they're having an issue getting out of the fucking restroom. Uh, <laughs> some of them got out, but not all of them. Get your hands off Susan. I don't care about anyone else. Get your hands off Susan. She's a nice old lady. You didn't do anything wrong. It also doesn't help that my grandmother's first name is also Susan and has a very uncanny resemblance. So I, I can never get angry at Susan or else I'm getting angry at my own grandmother for existing in a video game. Oh, she's 76, not 78. Okay. I'm a fake speedrunner because I don't know everything about this game. To get the ages wrong. Are we having a problem here? Oh my god, Debbie, I'm sorry. Oh my god, I just hit Susan, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry with hitting you with a lead pipe at full force, Susan. <laughs> You're okay, though, don't worry. Can you get up, Gil? There you go, buddy. Oh boy, here we go. Is everyone on the platform? Okay, good. Alright, next story mission. Uh, so, because Isabella is on our side, uh, Carlito's response to Isabella not wanting to work with him anymore is that he's gonna blow up the mall. He has been, he has been storing explosive gas underneath the mall, and he has some bombs stored under there in trucks, and if the bombs go off, then everyone dies, and the zombie parasite will be sent sky high into the stratosphere and infect everything as the wind patterns carry the parasite all over the world. Kinda sucks, I know, but we have a boss fight to get to first. Uh, remember Kent? Remember Kent and how he was a nice guy? Dickhead. 
I don't remember him being nice either, but you know, things change. Okay. Kent is a very strange boss. Kent has, like, the least health out of every boss in the game besides Carlito in the food court and the final boss. But, uh, he can infinite you. He, he is designed like a very bad Marvel vs. Capcom infinite character in that he can infinite you if you give him the chance. So, uh, I try to not let him do that. Anyway, we need to take multiple phone calls here. The first one is from Isabella explaining the situation with the time bombs. Tad, go over there. There's no zombies over there. Go over there. And uh, since we're level 39, we can do some very special things with uh, Simone here. We can knock her over on this platform. And we're gonna, uh... There we go. I'm here to help! Suplex! This isn't a real speedrun, you're not wearing the servbot helmet. I don't know where that is. Actually, is that over there? Can I go get that right now? Uh... I don't know where that is. <laughs> My memory of clothing is not the best idea. Uh... I don't... Th I th thought that it was in here, but maybe not. Oh yeah, uh, we suplex her to make it so that she doesn't have to walk all the way around the CD store to exit it. Uh, I thought that the servbot mask was here. Maybe it isn't. Never mind. It was right on the floor. That's a weapon, though. I can't pick this up. Like, these these are weapons. Unfortunately, I can't put this on. I've been wasting time trying to find the fucking surfbot mask. Uh, I can throw it, and I can make zombies wear it. I can make zombies wear it. But I do know where one mask is. I'm going to waste so much time doing this. I needed that. F I needed to actually answer that phone call. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shasta. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm probably going to take this phone call in here now. Do you want to come through, Otis? There we go. Okay, now he's talking about how uh, Kindle is trying to start a mutiny because he doesn't believe that the helicopter's showing up. Ruining the run for memes. Yeah. You want to come in? Okay, there we go. Go over there, <laughs> please. I also don't need this anymore. Look at how far he can chuck that. Like, holy shit. He just chucked that like a solid 50 yards. And that's not even at max throw distance yet. Okay. So, there's two things we need to do. We need to stop the mutiny, and we need to give Floyd the wine that he was looking for. So, we're going to be doing multiple things here. We're going to be talking to Floyd to start his conversation. Please let me through. We're going to interrupt Floyd's conversation with Kindles. And he's like... We're going to... I'm going to use all of these innocent people as a body... As a shield. To make sure that I can escape unscathed. But... He has a plan. What's your plan, Kindle? Enlighten us on what your plan is. I didn't listen to what your plan is, but it sucks. So giving Floyd the wine there actually fast forwards Kindle through all of that dialogue, and that's the longest series of text boxes you can do it with. 
Can you get 50 survivors plus a couple extras and a little helicopter? Uh, you can get 53 of them. Wearing a horse mask. That's a crazy talk, and you know it. Sounds like a plan, partner. <laughs> I needed to wait there because actually with speed three, I can be too fast for the mutiny averted screen to show up and that would make it fail. Just like uh, leaving Ronald's hunger too early would cause it to fail. Uh, I don't need the machine gun anymore. By the way, that is all survivors rescued from a fresh save. If you look up some, like, real old-ass Game Facts forum posts, you'll see a lot of posts saying, oh, that's not possible, but, uh, you know. We're in, 20 we're in 2017, we can do what we want. I'm sorry, we're in 2016, that's when this release came out. I can't do 2016 plus 10. Alright, so now we're actually going to get to do Bomb Collector. Bomb Collector is uh, a bit of a mess because uh, the only enemies in this tunnel are Carlito in his truck who will throw grenades at us and zombies with shopping carts. If I hit the shopping carts wrong, my car will flip over. And uh, having a car flipped over is not good because then I can't do anything with it. Oh, and by the way, I didn't notice the fucking map! Clipping through the car. Oh, I, d I don't wear this mask normally. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love it. Beautiful. I think this was worth the time loss from going to find the mask. I was already like two minutes behind PB anyway from survivors not cooperating, so it doesn't matter, really. Okay, so we're not going to back up fully, we're just going to lightly tap the brake. Uh-oh. Because, uh, backing up is slow, however, just lightly tapping your foot on the gas pedal to show how tight the turning radius is in this sedan... It's better. It's a lot better. Congrats on re-murdering 2,000 people. Oh, yeah. You know, in case you've never played this game before, there's an achievement for killing the exact 